with this week's Beyond Clean Expert series episode entitled, Do You Know Your Chemical Sterilants? was written by EO sterilization expert Ted May, President and CEO at Anderson Products Division. Can you answer this simple quiz on the comparative toxicity of ethylene oxide, hydrogen peroxide, and paracetic acid? How do they compare in terms of OSHA's permissible exposure limit and NIOSH's immediately dangerous to life or health? First, some background. Ethylene oxide, or EO, was introduced as a method of hospital sterilization in the 1950s. By the late 1960s, EO had become the dominant chemical sterilant in major healthcare facilities. OSHA was established in 1971, and by the early 80s, it set permissible exposure levels for EO. Hospitals began environmental monitoring for EO and testing employees for exposure. So it took about 30 years for the industry to recognize the potential dangers of EO. Fast forward a few years. Parasitic acid washer and disinfection systems were introduced in the late 1980s. Hydrogen peroxide sterilizers were introduced in the early 90s. From the introduction of these systems, there's been a widespread belief that hydrogen peroxide and parasitic acid are safer than EO and do not require exposure monitoring. So here's your comparative toxicity quiz. Which sterilant has the lowest permissible exposure limit and immediately dangerous to life or health number? Which is the most potentially hazardous? Ethylene oxide, hydrogen peroxide, or parasitic acid? Did you correctly answer EO and hydrogen peroxide have the same permissible exposure limit of 1 ppm? Did you know the proposed permissible exposure limit for parasitic acid is even lower? Regarding immediately dangerous to life or health, the level for EO is 10 times higher than for hydrogen peroxide. And remember, a higher number represents lower risk. And for parasitic acid, most people are surprised to learn that NIOSH is considering a proposed ILDH value that is lower still. Hydrogen peroxide and parasitic acid systems have now been around for over 30 years, and they've become the dominant sterilization and disinfection methods in most healthcare facilities. If history repeats itself, the 30-year grace period is coming to an end. Organizations governing worker safety have begun enforcing monitoring requirements for both hydrogen peroxide and parasitic acid. Under the OSHA General Duty Clause, employers have an obligation to protect workers from serious and recognized workplace hazards, even where there is no standard. Everyone who operates an EO sterilizer understands the importance of monitoring and testing. Are you testing for these other potentially hazardous chemicals in the workplace? Thanks for listening to this episode of the Beyond Clean Expert Series. For more ethylene oxide sterilization questions and answers, you can contact Ted at ted.may at sterility.com.